All right, so first thing you're going to do is you'll go to nearpod.com. And nearpod.com, you go up here to the top right and click login. When you click login, it'll take you this page here. We want to log in with our Google accounts here with our teacher's email accounts. Those are our Google accounts. If you're already logged into your email, it'll pop up and show it here. You can go ahead and log in. If not, you'll just sign in with your full email address, technology password. All right, so now that we're logged in, we get some tabs. On these tabs, we have My Library, which is items that you have published. Store is Nearpod Store. Join is if you wanted to join someone's Nearpod, you would enter the PIN number there. They would share what PIN number it was, and then you could enter that session. Create is when you want to make a new Nearpod or edit a Nearpod. And reports is where your analytics show up once you've done polls and different things like that. So we're going to start with create because these are our unpublished my library stuff that we published. So we're going to start with create. So I'm going to open create. So you'll see here we want to make a new presentation. If you had any other presentations, they'd be right through here until they're published. And once they're published, they'll be here with a publish little badge on them. So we'll make a new presentation. We're going to show there's a couple options here. If we wanted to, we could start from scratch, and you can actually build your PowerPoint all through here. A little tougher to navigate somewhat than just going ahead and making it in PowerPoint, because really what we're going to want to do is add those analytical parts to it, not so much the actual creating of the PowerPoint. So I'm going to show here, I've got a PowerPoint right here I can add to it. Now there's a couple ways I can get to it. I can click and drag it, and see the plus sign, I could let it go and it'll go right into there. I can also do a browse, and when I browse I can find that exact same folder right there, and I can open it this way. So you don't have to do the drag and drop, you can. Um, but anyway, I'm going to drag a couple of the others. I'm going to drag this how to research over. Okay, I'm going to make go back to full screen view. So I'll take just a little bit of time here to process the content. Once it up, I'll be, once it's all up here, I'll come back. All right, now that we have this loaded, there's some things we can I can show you real quick here. We can rearrange say I wanted to move this slide down here I can do that easily all you gotta do is drag and drop and they move then if we want to add content we can add content and say um, this content button is really just to add slides and some videos and things like that say there's a video you found you wanted to add you can click the video um, you can add those files there if you have them created we can also add an activity, which is more what we're worried about right now. These activities are those ways that we can check for understanding quickly and easily using Nearpod. That's the difference. It changes a PowerPoint from just a PowerPoint where you sit and get to a PowerPoint where you're actually having active participation. So we'll start here with an open-ended question. So our open-ended uh, question Maybe uh, if you're wanting to ask a specific question on any kind of term, you can ask, you know, give a definition here and uh, then ask them what vocabulary term is this describing. Okay, and we save that. Now it's automatically going to put it down here at the bottom. Let's say, that we want to move it up here. So now we have this open-ended discussion sitting in our PowerPoint. Okay. Next, we're going to add another activity. We can add a poll. Okay, maybe. Do you agree with what they decided to do? Yes. No. Save. We 
again. That's going to show up down here towards the bottom. Wherever you were highlighted last, it'll show up after there. I can go ahead and add quiz. I'm not going to go through and add all these. It's very similar to our open-ended questions, except the major difference here is that it's going to grade it. So I'll add one question. You can add multiple questions as many as you want. Uh, one plus one equals what? So I get the answer one, I get the answer two, I can add answers if I want, and I say this is the correct answer. Save. Okay. So that quiz, we put that towards the end. We can add another activity. The draw it is kind of a neat activity specifically for um, doing diagrams, being able to handwrite their own answers, whatever you might want. You can even put a picture here and have them point out a certain object, whatever you'd like there, so we can add pictures. You can browse those files, you can drag images in. If you have some in Dropbox, you can do those as well. So here, maybe say, create a graph for whatever. So let me save that. So now I have all these different things scattered throughout my presentation. And you can just do one, you can do a couple, and save them as you go. Now when we're done, there's a big distinction between publish and done. When you say done, okay, it says this will not show up, you need to publish it. That's fine. You say yes, you can click the don't remind me again. But when we're done here, so these are my presentations, but this is unpublished. If I want, I can go back to here and then I can publish it. So now that I've published it, it's ready to be used. Difference is, once you've published it, when you edit it from this point on, it makes clones of that same presentation. Where if you leave it unpublished until you're 100% done, then you're not worried about cloning it over and over again. Although that's not a huge deal, you can clone and delete your original pretty simply. Okay, so now if I want, I can go in here to the published. If I click on it, it gives me a few options. Now I can preview this. So if I hit preview, this is how it's going to show up on their iPad or their device that they're using. So as they're scrolling through, you can make sure everything's in place. When it gets to your questions, that's how it's going to show up on theirs with an empty box that they can add to. Then, when you're done previewing it, you hit X. So now that we're done, I'm going to go back to home. So these are my presentations. I'm going to go to home. I'm going to go to my library now. My library shows everything that's been published. So this one's been published. When I click on it in the My Library section, it allows us to start this live session. So once we do this live session, that's when we're able to show the things to the students. We control what they're doing. We have some really cool options inside of that. So I'm going to go ahead and click Live Session. When that opens up, it's going to give this login number. Now this login uh, PIN number is what the students will use to log in to the, your Nearpod, to this specific Nearpod. So this specific Nearpod has this exact PIN number. You only use it for this one. And if you were to close this and come back to it another time and start a new session, it would have another PIN number as well. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with my iPad and be right back. Okay, then once you start, this is what you're seeing on your screen, and that is also what the students are seeing on their screen. When you go to the next slide, depending on how you set it up, in this case, the second slide is the one where it's going to ask them, prompt them to enter their name. Now, this is where you want to be very specific and make sure that they know this needs to be their real name. And if you have multiple students with the same name, it might be a good idea to say first and last, or first and last initials, so you can definitely di differentiate between the two. So I've just logged into this, and you'll see student number one turn into my name. So once everyone's logged in, and you can see real quickly how many students you have, then we're ready to move on. So as I click through, they're seeing exactly 
what I'm showing them. When I get to the point where it's time for a question, we can see here, no one's answered. Well, it just popped up. So if I wait here and I can put in my answer, you'll see my answer pop up here in just a second. So right now, I could show, say, oh, I really like this answer in this case. Obviously, I would not, but if I like this answer and I click share, now everyone that's linked together here is seeing this answer on their screen. And then I can talk about it, talk about why I think it's a good answer, maybe what's missing so that we can work on what's missing as well. Click on share. I'm ready to move on. And then it goes right back into the PowerPoint. Now it's time for me to the person could do a drawing. So whatever. And then label my drawing. And when I send it in, the picture will show up here. It'll say thanks for submitting on the student screen. It pops up. Here's my picture. When you open it and you see the students, you can hit share again. This will show up on everyone's screen. It won't say the name. It'll just show the item so that you can discuss it and talk about it with your students. If you have multiple students, you can just go right here and click through them real quickly and click which ones you want to share. When you're done, you go right back into the PowerPoint and we come to the next question. wait for people to submit. Great thing is it's going to also show up as this cool little graph right here whatever when you do a poll and when you share the only thing that will share to the students is this graph right here. It's not going to say who answered what but it's going to show you the graph. So we go ahead and scroll through to the rest of them and we'll get to our quiz at the end. Then on the quiz this is one plus one this person answers It'll show here which answer they picked. Picked B, which is the correct answer. We're all done. There's the citations. When we're all set and done, we click this back arrow. It says, do you want to leave? Yes. Once you leave, um, it's out from the students as well. The students can leave that. One last cool thing to show. We're going to resume right back to where we were. Is that you can see this little green group of people up here. If I was to exit, which I just did off the iPad, I just exited off Nearpod, you'll notice here in just a second that this is going to go from green to red. Uh, it takes just a little bit of time to catch up with itself, but if you ever notice that this goes red, what that means is someone in your class has stopped following your presentation. You click on this, it'll show up with what students have got closed off. You can go redirect them and get them back to that PowerPoint so that you're ready to go. So once I come back to that, it'll show back up as green and you know everybody's back on the same page. Alright, so then when you're done, we can go back and we can review our reports, which is over here in this Home tab. In the Home tab, we go to Reports. And so any of the PowerPoints that we have or the Nearpods that are shared, we can click on these and see their reports from the day. So here's today's. When I go into it, it's going to show me the overall engagement that I that shows what students did what, which ones missed what. Then we go, we can go individually and see quiz one plus one. Uh, so. Brandon responded twice. I don't know. Should, oh, that, that I responded number two for the answer. So that's my answer. And I got it correct. It shows how many got correct, wrong, or who didn't answer. It shows your poll. You click here. Yes. Again, it would show up different colors for what we were. The open ended. Okay. Again, who answered it? And the graph. We click here and it shows the picture for each person. You can also download this as a PDF session. Once you've downloaded it, you'll see that 
this pops up and you can see exactly what everything was. So for this Nearpod, the student list, what the open answer, ended question answers were, what the drawings were, and what the quizzes answers were, and if they were correct or incorrect. Great way to be able to pull that information really quickly. All right, the last thing I'm going to show is how you can go in to Canvas. And once you're logged into Canvas, you can see all your courses here that you've signed up for. And then when you find the one you want to put this Nearpod in, you go to it. And then we've got some options down the side here of what we where we want to put things. I put everything in modules. And since most of our students um, are not signed up for, you know, don't check their email like they had said, uh, I, I rely mainly in modules. You can also do announcements and you can make announcements on this page and you could make a link straight from an announcement. So if I wanted to do that, I could add an announcement here so that when they opened it up today, they would see the Nearpod. And then I can make a link right here, which is uh, the nearpod.com slash login so that when they came here and they got to my screen when they got to the home screen they would see this announcement it's in nearpod and when they open it up there's this nearpod link uh, that would go there and I didn't show up as a link so if that ever happens sometimes they'll automatically do it sometimes not all you gotta do right here is make sure it does become a link And now I know it's a link. Now when it goes back to it, they're going to be able to hyperlink straight to that site. So like I said, I don't use announcements. So I'm going to actually go back and delete this announcement off my page. I rely mainly in modules, which are right here. So this is how I have my modules arranged into mainly my big units and then I collapse them or uncollapse them as I see fit and then I also put dates on when they become open and I can change those as we go through obviously this last nine weeks I've had to do that quite a bit but then as you look through here you'll see differences between a content page a quiz an assignment and again a content page and so that's kind of where I organize most of mine so if I go and say I wanted to add a Nearpod to this day here, I can add to the objective or I can add it into the content page. So if I go into this creature own object, which is one of the things we've been working on, you'll see I've already got some, invid some videos put in here. I've got a picture added. Um, I've got a PowerPoint here that's actually a Google Drive PowerPoint that's got the videos. Let's say I wanted to add a Nearpod link. All I'd have to do is go up here and say, today I want to start in Nearpod. I say click here to go to Nearpod. Then I can highlight this, insert that link, nearpod.com slash login. And now this link will show up if they click on the click here. It'll take them to nearpod.com slash login, which is where they will go to then be able to click on that link, that PIN number that you would share with them out of my library when we open this and made this a live session. You would share, that's that PIN number you would share, and then they would go into it and they'd be able to see exactly what you're seeing. So hopefully that will help you with some of your questions there and there'll be more to come later.